to book club lesson 11. It seems like we have been together for a very, very long time, looking at the adventures of B um, and all of her adventures in the story of how to skin a bear. Now, this is our last session before Easter. And what we're going to be looking at today is something that is a little bit more practical, but something that B encountered during her story. So what can you see in this picture? If you look really, really closely, what can you see? Because this is going to give you a clue as to what we're going to look at today. So a few comments coming in. It's a cave painting. And this is a cave painting of a bison. And prehistoric people, people even in the Stone Age, early man, were creating paintings uh, on caves. And some of them, due to the correct conditions that they were found, uh, are still viewable and visible today. And that's what we're going to be looking at. And we're going to be doing some Stone Age historical art experimentation. And so that's what we're going to be looking at today. Now, the thing that we have, the picture that we've just seen is a picture of a bison hunt. And where can you find this cave painting of the bison? I'm just gonna put my camera off so you can see a little bit better. It is in, Altama in Altamira, okay. And so in Altamira, which is, as you can see, in the north of Spain is where it was found, okay. Now you can see, um a some lots of replicas of these because it's like lots of things it's a bit like even the egyptian tombs or anything that's very very old as soon as you allow people in to see them and they breathe on them and there's humidity there they can start to break down so you can see people are encouraged to go and see uh, the replicas of the altamira cave paintings rather than actually going and seeing them for real because what we really, really want to do is actually care for them. And that's because when they were first discovered, people were allowed to go into the cave. There was no limit on visitors. And believe it or not, which I still can't believe, people were allowed to touch the paintings. Some people chiseled bits of the paintings and took pieces of the cave with them. Similar things happened to Stonehenge. People have, uh, that's why people aren't allowed near to Stonehenge because uh, people chipped bits of the rocks off and took the stone off and took them with them. And so the cave paintings became really damaged. And so archaeologists said, you know what, if uh, access to the cave is not controlled, we are going to lose them. And so now you can't see the originals, um, you go and see the replicas. And this is something that's happening in lots of lots of fragile things. So again, Tutankhamun's tomb is also um, in a real state of problem because of pe too many visitors, too much humidity, too much touching of the walls, uh, very similar. And they're nowhere near, they're, they're uh, nowhere near as old as some of these prehistoric paintings, which are thousands and thousands of years old. But the point of them is, is that they're incredibly special because lots of them have been found all over the world. And the particular cave paintings that we're looking at were discovered in 1879. And there was an amateur archaeologist um, and he was exploring lots of different caves on his land. And he was called Marcelino Sanz di Sao Paulo. And he had a daughter and her, his daughter was called Maria. And they went and looked, oh, they were just basically exploring and they were looking at caves. And so they looked into these caves um, and Maria was looking in one of them and uh, she was looking around and exploring. And that's where she saw these particular pictures, these cave paintings. Now, Maria thought that they were ox or oxen because that was an type of animal that, uh, you know, was around at that point in the 19th century. But when her dad looked at the pictures and the paintings, he realised that they were actually um, a species of oxen that are now extinct. They are more akin to bison. And so he went and said, look, I found these amazing paintings. They're paintings of this kind of prehistoric bison. They were definitely, definitely done 
thousands and thousands of years ago by prehistoric people. And lots of archaeologists and historians were like, absolutely not. There's no way that anybody uh, from the Stone Age or from prehistory were capable of producing artwork. And he spent his whole life trying to prove that these paintings were thousands of years old and that they were produced by um, prehistoric people. And so now we know, we've proven, and they're accepted now as being prehistoric, and they're 14,000 years old. So from there, they're from the Paleolithic uh, period of time, and they, are, they were the first examples of cave paintings ever to be discovered. And it shows, really, if you think about what it shows you, what it shows you is that prehistoric people had lots and lots of um, understanding about colour and pigments because they made their own pigments that have stood the test of time, that they are still there thousands and thousands of years later. And so what I'm going to say, what we're going to do is we are going to think about whether or not we can make our own paintings. And there's lots of different ways you can do this. So if you look in the copy above, or below in the text, you can find um, a document that will print off various different animals. So you can maybe, if you want to, you can go and print those off and then you can cut those out and you can either draw around them and use them as a basis to paint or alternatively you can put them in the middle and paint around them and take your animal off and you'll see the relief. Like you can see, if I put my cam, if I put my PowerPoint back on, like you can see with these hands. So there's two different ways of doing it. You can either paint the thing, or you can paint around the thing, uh, whatever that might be. If you want to do your hand prints, you absolutely could. And then what you're going to do is you're going to think of trying to make some natural paints. So you could use. So here, what I've got as an example, I've got a tea bag, so I can go around and use my tea bag. OK, and I can use that. So that's one example and let that dry. And then if I lift this up afterwards, then I'll have my prehistoric painting. Another thing I've got in here is some blueberries that I've squashed up. Now, it's important that you only use fruit um, from uh, the shop. Please do not go and wild gather berries because you don't know whether they're poisonous. Um, but you can use uh, berries um, or um, you can have a bit of an experiment so this is the whole point of experimenting now if you're really into this and you're not vegan you can also look at uh, making egg tempura uh, paint because you can find that if you mix um, the pigment of fruit with uh, egg white you'll find that the paint actually is, is a lot better uh, but you can do that an alternative thing you can do is go and find some clean mud and you can use some clean mud um, and paint with the mud if you want to and then you need to think also like what are you going to paint on i'm painting on a bit of paper but you could maybe go and paint on some stone or your uh, or some rock um you could if you've got a patio and you're grown up to be you could maybe because it's all natural so it should wash off you could maybe go and do it on on some stone you could maybe go and research on prehistoric creatures that you're going to going to use, but making sure if you're using any fruits or anything like that, that you're definitely just using stuff from the kitchen and the supermarket. And if you're going to use mud, make sure it's clean mud. And as I said, making the other thing is to do try and also can you see that? Look at my lovely my lovely relief uh, prehistoric rhino. The other thing to think about is um, when you've done your piece of work um, and you've decided what you're going to do, how are you going to paint it on? Because you you can't really use a paintbrush. You're going to use your fingers. Are you going to try and make a prehistoric paintbrush? You're going to try and get some uh, fibres and some sticks. You're going to try and maybe grind down a stick, like a sapling, a little bit of like soft and use that. Lots of experimentation. And so what you're going to do is you're going to do all of that in order to try and replicate um, all of the paintings and go and have another look. Go and have a look at lots of prehistoric paintings. There's lots of them out there. 
and see if you can create, this is what historians do all the time, if you can emulate the techniques that prehistoric people have used. And then head over to our Facebook group and do share any paintings that you do or DM me if you would prefer, because I'd love to see them. But go and experiment, but just making sure that you are using any fruits from the supermarket or the local shops and you're not collecting wild things because that can sometimes be a bit dangerous. Now, that is the end of our uh, 11 weeks with B and Dog. Uh, live lessons and workshops will be back the week commencing the 1st of May because we're going to take a couple of weeks off for Easter. And then the week back, after two weeks off, we're going to have a week back and there will be a virtual botanical live and some quizzes. But what we're doing that week, really, we're not starting back that week for a reason. And that is because we are gearing up for the Home Ed Conference. So the 24th to the 28th of April is our Home Ed Conference. There's a link above or below in the copy, depending on what platform you're watching on, will take you to the booking site because not only do we have piles of webinars um, and workshops for grown-ups, but we have piles of webinars and workshops for young people too. So we're going to have a two-week break, a week of uh, a few special lives and then we are going to have our home ed conference where there's lots and lots for you to get involved in. So head and book your tickets in the link either above or below. And then we will be back with a new book club the week commencing the 1st of May. If you haven't already seen it um, over in our Facebook group, there was a vote on which book you would like to read next. So go and find that um, and I will see you. Uh, in two weeks where we uh, some of our special lives and during the conference as well and if not I will see you back the week commencing the 1st of May. I'll see you soon and don't forget to share those amazing paintings that you